Our next speaker, Professor Vladimir Crnojevic, is the director of the Biosense Institute, which focuses on research and development in ICT for agri-food sector at various levels, from micro and nanotechnology sensors, through Internet of Things, agri-robotics, remote sensing, to big data, machine learning, and artificial intelligence. He is a full-time professor in computer sciences at the University of Novi Sad, Serbia, and founder of Biosense Institute under his leadership. Biosense Institute grew from 12 to 120 employees, 40 of them are PhD holders, and became recognized as a regional leader in digital transformation of agriculture with around 100 various projects implemented. His current research interests include machine learning, image processing, remote sensing, big data, and Internet of, Internet of Things applied in agri-food and biosystems. He will tell us how data science may be a crucial game changer in agriculture. Professor, please take the stage. Thank you. Can I get a presentation, please? Um, hello, everyone. Uh, today I'm going to tell you about Biosense, Biosense story. And how data science may be crucial game changer in agriculture as the title of, of my talk. Uh, so one slide about Biosense. We are R&D Institute for Information Technology and Biosystems. So any uh, connecting point between biosystems and information technologies uh, of our interest. And I will try to show you briefly uh, what does that mean in practice. Uh, we are a public institute. We, uh, somebody, someone gave us name first public startup because in only six years we grew up to what we are today. Uh, they say that the future is on the side who, or th of those who see the opportunity before they become obvious. So we saw the opportunity 15 years ago that to combine IT, my background is machine learning, and I was doing that uh, uh, as a pioneer 20, 25 years ago for uh, US industry. And then we realized since we live in Serbia, where agriculture is one of uh, important topics, uh, let's try to see if we can combine these two uh, together. Here we are today with 130 permanent staff uh, and uh, 40 PhDs, and as we, you heard, one, more than 100 projects uh, implemented so far. Uh, among these projects is our biggest success, uh, Antares project. Uh, I will give you a four, few words about it, but this is the current statistics from the European Commission. So we are constantly ranked in top 10 uh, institutions in Eastern Europe with respect to, to, to uh, participation in, in Horizon program. Uh, if you look at the other institutions, those are big uh, universities with 5,000 employees. So if you take into account our 130, it's really per capita big success. And in Serbia, we are by far uh, uh, the most recognized uh, institution. But the major uh, uh, turning point was Project Antares, uh, where we were ranked among 170 institutions in Europe as number one. Uh, even the column is called EU rank, so you can imagine what, what that meant uh, to be above uh, all European institutions. And we get the funding of 30 million euros to establish the, the center of excellence for the future of agriculture. And this is basically what I'm uh, uh, talking about today, where through combination of, of uh, people, talent, equipment, infrastructure, uh, innovative uh, concepts like accelerators, uh, open labs, demonstration farms, uh, and digital villages, we are looking to transform uh, 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 the agriculture of the future. This is our building that is currently being built on, uh, in, in, the, uh, in Novi Sad, and hopefully in one year from now we will have place for 300 researchers uh, inside. So our role is to play a missing link in, in uh, this story, where through the data, we are connecting different worlds uh, th that were not uh, uh, digitally connected up, uh, up to now. Just to give you the idea about the insurance and banks with agriculture, production and stock markets. So I will 
show you in, in, uh, 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 soon in examples what does that mean. But our picture that we uh, made six years ago is still totally valid. Uh, we look at every piece of agriculture, environment, aquaculture, forestry, all biosystems as the sources of data. No matter whether it's an animal, plant, uh, tree, uh, machine on the, on the field, sensor, satellite, drone, anything becomes a source of data. And by putting it into the cloud and applying something that this conference is devoted to, uh, we are data science, we are uh, there to provide new values and services to different uh, stakeholders. So just a brief illustration, let's start from the, from the machine. Uh, if you look at this line of trees, it's between Belgrade and Novi Sad. Uh, it's long 15 kilometers. And it's a beautiful winter photo, but uh, for uh, someone with a background in agriculture, uh, that will tell you that there is something interesting because genetically those trees are the same and they were planted on the same date. Uh, from the point of view of signal processing, as an uh, 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 engineer with a background in signal processing, I can, with true Fourier transform, I can give you the sampling rate, how to extract the, the value from this signal. What, what is the, uh, uh, the, the story behind it? The soil variability uh, is changing in such a way that it makes a wave. So by exploiting the soil variability, uh, with different sensors like this one, uh, uh, where we are scanning the soil and, and getting the, the 2D representation image of what is going on in the soil, like this, and combine it with the satellite data for the same field, we can basically make the money map and tell you where to invest the money, where to plant what, and you can see for the same uh, field, this is the after harvesting the yield map. So it, the, for soybean, it is going from two tons per hectare to eight tons per hectare. So one to four within the same, within the same field, just by, by uh, uh, analyzing the data to understand where to put your money. Money means fertilizer, seeds, and other, other things in, in agriculture. If you look uh, at the other sources of data, like remote sensing, this is the map of uh, Vojvodina, since we are based in Novi Sad. We are using all kinds of remote sensing data to produce through image processing and, and uh, machine learning different uh, maps. And this is our product that is currently used by many companies and, and uh, uh, public uh, authorities. This is the uh, product of machine learning. We are changing the algorithms, but for, for uh, the sake of this audience, for example, this result is a result of random forest algorithm, where with 97 plus percent of accuracy, we can tell what is grown where on which field. So you can imagine what, what is the value of this for various uh, 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 stakeholders in this uh, chain. And also we can give the estimate of the condition. So for example, variability in this field tells us that, that either there is something wrong or that there will be, there will be a variability in the yield. The next thing would be a sen sensor uh, story. Uh, currently, we are building the nano uh, lab with investment of more than 10 million euros in equipment. It will be uh, regionally east of Milan, the, the most sophisticated uh, nanotechnology laboratory, where we are producing the sensors of the future. One of them is this one, we call it plantometer which is spec spectrometer connected with uh, Bluetooth to, to mobile phone, and it can uh, estimate by just by looking at the plant what is the condition and whether it, uh, it needs some nutrients or treatment or whatever. Uh, mobile phone has become a regular tool in agriculture. I would say the most useful tool in agriculture. If you attach thermal cameras, spectrometers, and other things, it, it's, it's becoming lab laboratory. Tool. And by using geotagged photos, we can do a lot, a lot for, uh, for uh, digitizing agriculture and processing the data from mobile phones. Also, within IoT world, uh, microelectronics and nanotechnology for new sensors, 
that can have a massive deployment through different IoT technologies is the way to go. So we have currently, uh, we are deploying 500 weather stations all across Serbia. Just to give you an idea, National Meteo Service has 28. Uh, weather stations, but in agriculture you want to know what's going on on your field, not 100 kilometers away. So by dense deployment uh, with, in cooperation with telecom using LoRa network, we will have the possibility to have much more accurate data on what is going on. And finally, one of the promising technologies that we are working on is robotics in agriculture. Uh, you, you can uh, see that uh, labor in agriculture is uh, on, uh, in the West, it's a problem for years. Uh, the last year, it became a serious problem in, in Serbia. When there is a, a campaign of harvesting, uh, it's really troublesome to find uh, uh, labor for, for doing this job. So the future is really in automation, like in any other industry. The, the, the next big uh, uh, domain of this is uh, agriculture. So we are using uh, different robots to, as a platform to, to mount uh, different things like plantometer or something else. In this case, this is a moving laboratory for soil analysis. So we give the exact points by geotagging on the map and we let the robot go. And on the way, it's taking samples and doing the analysis on the run. So we just get the, the result immediately. We don't have to take to lab and wait to, for a week to get the analysis uh, of the soil. And finally, when we get all this data, I put it in, in the cloud, then the real, the real story starts by combining these things. We can, we can really uh, uh, make uh, uh, miracles. So, uh, as I said, from all these sources, we put the data into, the one, into one place, and then we are producing something that I'm going to show you, show you now. So, uh, one of the things that we are especially proud of is Syngenta Crop Challenge. Uh, Syngenta is the biggest uh, agricultural company in the world. Two years ago, it, it's been acquired by, by uh, Chinese Chem China for 60 billion euros. And they made a data challenge uh, where different uh, research institutions were competing uh, to solve the problems. In 2017, we, we were number one globally. Competition was Stanford, MIT, Urbana Champaign, and those, uh, 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 this level of of uh, competition. So one typical problem was to uh, solve smart seed problems. So for example, they have uh, just in Syngenta portfolio 180 soybean seed varieties. Uh, how really to know which one to put on this uh, piece of land? Uh, if you take into account other companies, we are talking about the thousands of soybean varieties and it's only for soy. Let's imagine corn, wheat, sugar beet, sunflower, other things. It's a mess. So uh, they gave 80,000 samples with a request to solve the problem, to, to decide on this field, which is the right seed to maximize the yield, but also to reduce the risk, to control uh, uh, the risk because the weather is uh, really uh, 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 something that we cannot know what's going on longer than a week. So, so it, it may uh, uh, really make a real mess. So with different uh, uh, machine learning algorithms that were built behind, uh, we came to the idea to put this in a framework of portfolio optimization. Usually this is used on, on uh, stock market to balance your investment. So if you take, for example, this number 41, uh, we call it Las Vegas strategy zero or, or uh, uh, jackpot, uh, or if you take 170, this is peanuts strategy. What does this mean? If you invested in Google 25 years ago, you would be a very rich man or uh, cryptocurrency or whatever. If you invested in Coca-Cola, you would be safe, but uh, the yield would be very low. Those numbers are not stocks uh, 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 on the stock market. Those numbers are seeds. So 180 seeds are given here, and this constellation is changing from field to field. So for this field, if I take 41, I will have spectacular, spectacular yield, potentially, but if the uh, weather in that year is on average one centigrade lower, I might be in big trouble. 
If I go for 170, I will have one third of the yield, but I will have a good sleep because nothing can, can really di disturb the, the, the uh, growth of the plant. So if we walk along the Pareto front, we can make a mix and come with a solution uh, how to overcome this. So our solution gave five to 10% savings only by applying the algorithm, zero investment, just on a smart way to choose which seed uh, is right for the given uh, field. So Syngenta used this to come up with a strategy of distribution. So this, this is next level because logistics is uh, very important, where to keep your stocks of, of seeds for the farmers. So it turned out, this is for uh, American Midwest, it turned out that green seed can grow basically anywhere. It will give uh, uh, decent results and they can make the stocks everywhere. On contrary, the orange seed, lower right, is suitable only for Michigan. If they keep it in uh, 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 Idaho or somewhere else, it's a, it, it will be a big mess. No one will buy it and they will have a pure, pure loss. So this is an example how we solve this problem. And based on this, one spin-off was started that in two years became really successful. Uh, uh, and I will have an opportunity with two or three slides to show you at the end uh, what they are doing now. So uh, finally, the central point of this is the user. Either it's a, it's a, a big company or uh, government or, or farmer, uh, it's the, the user that we have to build the services for. So this is uh, one table in Serbian. This is the, the uh, output of the laboratory for soil analysis. Usually when I give my talks, I ask people, what do they see this here? And they start to analyze uh, phosphorus, potassium, and other things that are given here. And I tell them as an IT expert, I see that it's made on nine pin dot matrix printer. So it means that it's going into the garbage right after the, the, the use. They use it to, de, the, to determine uh, how much fertilizer to, to, to give to the yield. Uh, so basically, there's no reuse of data. And Chinese proverb says that best time to plant a tree was 20 years ago. The next best time is now. So it's time to start to harvest those data in agriculture and it's the next big thing. It's ongoing uh, currently, but if you, for example, in Serbia, if you talk with uh, big agricultural companies, it's maybe two to three years uh, in the history. We, we don't have anything longer uh, than that. So based on this concept, service for the users, we came up with a, with a uh, system, AgroSense, uh, that is the backbone of our uh, IT products and it's an open platform uh, with more than 20,000 users now in Serbia only but uh, and it's free completely but then we have commercial derivatives for different stakeholders so by simple uh, email address farmers can get into the system find their fields in the cadaster register what is the production for that year and then harvest data services for diff from different repositories. So, for example, this is the weather forecast. Probably some of you are using yr.no Norwegian forecast. Th this is the same thing, but we have, the, through the API, we are getting the data for the given GPS location with two kilometers grid. So now they don't have to look at the national uh, weather service to, to uh, hear what is going on in that region. They know exactly what, what will happen on that field in the next. Uh, three days. Also, we are harvesting weather data from all possible services. For example, on National Weather Service, those, those 28 stations that I mentioned, you can go to the website and get the current uh, uh, situation. If you want to get historical data, which is crucial for agriculture, they have to know what was the accumulated temperature for the last 10 days or what is something that, the, the, uh, that is called degree days, what, what is the cumulative temperature or rainfall. Uh, and it's, it's not easy to get. So we are providing from three nearest weather stations all the data for the given field. Also, we give the possibility to use the mobile phone as a tool and to uh, uh, make a multimedia record of their, of their production. So by taking photos to see what is the stage of growth, what is the current problem, if there is any disease or, or pest or something, but also to enter 
all the activities with related costs, which is really, I, I, we are talking every day with, with uh, uh, people in agriculture in Serbia, and that's a uh, similar situation on the, on the east, 80% uh, of farmers are small farmers with, with only a few hectares. So they don't have a clue what is their real expense and what they can expect in the end. With this, they can get the data and uh, uh, get the analysis about the uh, uh, expected outcome and the income uh, in the end of production. So all these uh, geotech photos are collected in one place and they can then use it for their records, but also to share it with experts and to get the advice on what is this disease currently, should I spray it with some chemical or whatever. It's much more uh, efficient uh, and, and uh, 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 they have the record what they really did. Then we are uh, using European Space Agency satellites to give them every three to five days uh, accurate uh, maps of what is going on on their fields. Here is the example of so-called NDVI index, near different vegetation index. Uh, it's measuring the intensity of photosynthesis. So it's actually this picture here. It's the soybean that just emerged from the, from the soil. And you can see those two dates, it happened between those two dates. So be before that, there was a bare soil. And after that, there is a plant growing out. But what we can see is this variability that will tell you we are coming back to these trees. You will remember. We are seeing that there is a variability in the soil and the irrigation system did not work on the, on the uh, uh, upper part of the, of the soil. And then from the same satellite, they have the free service to do the analysis, actually to catch this variability. So for any given field, we provide them with uh, machine learning algorithms. This is clustering to get, to get the, the clusters of, of soil and to give them recommendations how to delineate the soil and where to take the samples to take it to the lab to really know what is going on. So uh, we, we had, a, just to give you an example, this is a new tool that we introduced a few months ago. And for one farmer that, that we used as, a, as an example, he had three uh, zones in his field, three distinct zones. And in one zone, there was 10 times more phosphorus than it is recommended. So it's a pure poison. Uh, but since they are using so-called NPK, it's nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium, the, 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 the uh, fertilizer that they throw uh, in, in, uh, at the same time. So by adding nitrogen, they were pumping up the phosphorus every year. So it's, it's getting poisonous. And with this, they can really take to, an L, to the lab to see what is going on in different zones. This is the map of recommended points for sampling. So the mobile phone is taking, navigating them to the place where they should take the sample. Uh, they get a serial number for that sample with geotagging, send it to the lab, and from the lab it's immediately uploaded in their profile to, to uh, really have that uh, as a record of uh, soil analysis. Uh, also, we uh, open the platform for different third-party services. There are drone uh, uh, images or any other kind of uh, uh, data uh, they can uh, upload into the system. So this is the... Uh, on the left hand side, there is a yield uh, map, new machines, new harvesters have the sensor uh, so that they, they can measure really what they, what they gathered from uh, which part of the field. And on the right hand side is the soil variability map. And you can really see the higher yield corresponds very well with the, with the soil quality. This is the, the idea that we said about the smart distribution of seeds and fertilizer and everything. Also from any, any sensor that uh, they are having, like weather, their own weather station or whatever, soil moisture, they can get it into the system. Financial analysis uh, based on the inputs that they made uh, by cross sections from different operations, fields, uh, inputs, outputs, and so on. And also uh, we, we are providing them to, to harvest uh, warnings uh, about pests and disease if they register that they have Apple, they will have the warning for Apple in their region if there is any, anything uh, announced. Of course, everything is available on, on uh, mobile phone. And as, as I said, that becomes an uh, important tool 
tool in agriculture. So to conclude just about the AgroSense, it's single entry point with all the relevant data for agriculture production, free uh, for most of the users. Uh, we are harvesting data from heterogeneous resources and develop big data analytics for, for the given uh, products. Uh, and where we see that we are going, it's a market for digital services based on the data uh, with different stakeholders. Speaking of them, we developed a system for uh, general insurance and also for, for uh, DDOR, the other company, where now they can really see what is going on on the field. They can know what is the subject of insurance and all their insured fields are into one GIS system where they're getting different analytics for, for different fields, uh, hailstorm uh, uh, incidents or any other problem that might have happened, there are warnings for that. And uh, loss adjusters, so that's a term for those guys that are checking the damage uh, on behalf of the company, loss adjusters have a mobile app with the, with the uh, uh, tasks for that day where they should go so they cannot go to the local pub and make a deal with the farmer. They have to go and take a photos with geofencing. So there is a five meters region that they have to get in to be allowed to make a, to make a photo. Uh, also for, for uh, public authorities, for provincial government, for uh, uh, the, the soil management authority, we developed uh, different systems for uh, data analytics, uh, 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 with respect to subsidies, uh, investments, soil quality, and so on. Uh, and for example, this is the map of all the subsidies, for example, for hail nets. If farmers got the money for hail nets, it's all entered into the system and the inspection have to go on the field and check what is going on. So it's all in one, in one uh, uh, system with enormous possibility for data data analytics. And uh, to mention, as I said, uh, spin-offs, we have a number of, of uh, spin-offs currently, and one that is related to the topic of, of this conference is uh, cropped, it's crop optimization. Uh, we, uh, basically, the, the, the uh, kick for this uh, spin-off was Syngenta uh, uh, challenge. And uh, we made, uh, uh, we uh, extended this idea not only to say which uh, soybean or whatever is optimal for this field, but on the whole property to optimize where to plant what in that year to have, to have uh, optimal results. It's hugely complex problem. We just uh, had, had made the illustration here. For 14 fields, it's a number of people on the planet. For 30 fields, it's number of stars in the universe, and for 170 fields, where to plant what, it becomes atoms in the universe. So uh, you can imagine how complex is that, uh, because you have uh, many constraints, like you cannot make same crop two times in a row on the same field because you are attracting diseases. Uh, that's constraint, the optimization, and many, many other things. So currently it's done like this. The guy is looking and saying, okay, this year I will do this. Totally uninformed decision. My grand grandfather did it like that, so I will do the same thing. So we are harvesting the data from various data sources, uh, soil repositories, uh, genetic maps, uh, climate services, uh, and, and uh, satellite data with the idea to increase profit by 30% and with 20% to, re, uh, to reduce the risk. Uh, currently, we are the, uh, doing the, the uh, business with this company for all the big players, MK, Delta, uh, Fricom, everyone is, is uh, currently in the system uh, for this. And finally, the last, the last activity that we can uh, announce uh, uh, here is that we are making a, we had a digital farm already, but now we are working on digital village. It, it's, we started already, it's a place in Northern uh, uh, Serbia called Mokrin. It used to be the biggest village in Yugoslavia. Now it's not uh, uh, anymore, but anyway, it's already very well developed. What we are doing now is that we are introducing digital uh, uh, system there. What does it mean? To put all the farmers in AgroSense, to make 20, 30 uh, uh, weather stations, very local, different sensors, 
to uh, boost the infrastructure and to bring uh, stakeholders like banks, insurance, government into digital system. So farmer, instead of going to the bank and waiting for the bank officer to come out to the field to check what is the potential of this or that, just by pressing the button, they can get the loan approval in a matter of minutes and sign the contract uh, uh, immediately, thus having the uh, stability and much better estima estimate of, the, of his potential to survive and to br uh, bring back uh, the loan. So this is where we see the future of agriculture. Uh, guys with laptops, tablets, mobile phones, uh, boys and girls, okay, on, on the field, it's getting popular now, and, and uh, to really uh, use the data as a resource. So we are having, it's not only to trade with the wheat or corn, uh, what we expect is to trade with the data in agriculture. We, saw, we, we showed what we achieved with cropped just by analyzing data, so the next big thing for farmer will be to sell his corn, but also to sell the data related to production for the uh, different stakeholders that might analyze it. So, zero, 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 huh? just on time. Thank you. We have about two minutes for questions. So are there any questions from, from the audience? I, w I would have one. I mean, uh, is the system organized in the way that uh, you said that farmers can use mobile phones for what they do? Can you, I mean, uh, is it adjusted so they can get notification per each field? So he will be informed every morning, let's say, or every evening, what is he supposed to do the next day? I mean, exactly what sort of stuff should he put in the field or what is the best thing to do if, if he wants the be best yield? Yes, that's what we, it's already in the system, but we are currently developing the roadmap that they have, they have, uh, uh, for example, if it's a wheat, they get the whole protocol, what they should do in this season. And every morning they have the alarm that they should do this and also digital advisory services. So experts from Belgrade or Netherlands can give the advice through the system that they should spray it with this chemical or uh, make the seeding with this distance and so on. So it's almost like when I buy a car and then I get a service. So I have to follow the service plan if I want to keep... Uh, uh, to keep the warranty. Yes, <laughs> to keep the warranty for it. Yes, yeah, so, something like that. We, we will get there. I mean, the, the, the sky is the limit with this. And, and in the future, probably 10 to 20 years from now, we will have robots on the fields doing according to these protocols. So was, what are, before we get to the robots, what are the present peasants saying? I mean, those who you got into the system, what, were they, what was their feeling at the beginning of the project or of the usage? And what do they think now? Can you give us a, an anecdote or something? Uh, many anecdotes. So uh, I'm proud to say that for four years of existence of AgroSense, we had a, probably a thousand comments and there was not a single one negative comment. But it's not an easy task uh, uh, because uh, farmers are a special kind of people. So they, they don't open up easily. They don't accept things for various reasons. Either they have something smarter to do because they are busy constantly doing something and uh, uh, they don't have time for this or they are suspicious about the espionage from the government, from the tax office, from this and that. I had to persuade them that we will not share their data with anyone. Uh, and this is, we had even a, a question from one guy, who gave you the authority to look from the satellite at my field? So that, 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 that's a question that, that they are having, but the, uh, it's changing, they're adopting this, and I, I think that there is no other option. Like you have your mobile phone for everything, communication with the bank. Look what happened, my bank is bank in Teza. They, they're killing the, the service in the bank, they're putting you on mobile app for everything. It's not that, like that, but in 10 to 15 years from now, they will do everything through mobile phone. So are they getting excited once when they see that this thing is working? Yeah, it depends on the kind of people. You have some tech savvy guys who really applaud for this and they say, yes, this is what I waited for my whole life. So, Okay, thank you. And may I provide you with, with a small diploma, which, okay. which is uh, a proof that you gave us this great lecture here. Thank you. Thank you.